your seats. It's time for a science lesson CFL style. The key to victory, as anyone will tell you, is chemistry. When you got it, hey, you got it. When you don't, well, you know the rest. Today, phase two in a home-and-home -home experiment to create a winning team for the playoffs. Last week, something went horribly wrong. Garcia and the Stamps looked merely human. But the Sponge and the boys know the winning formula. Yes, defeat is magic. Just ask the riders, but now things are looking good. Narcisse is the catalyst who can make or break the game. Success last week was elemental. Great defense, a solution every time. And so now you're ready, but please pay attention. There could be a quiz at any time. season championship has been well in hand for some time in Calgary. Now the Stamps would like to tune up for the playoffs, but they're not going to find it easy against the Green Riders who need a win to get to the postseason. Nice to see my brothers pick up their tickets. Welcome now to Calgary. I'm Scott Oak. Uh, let me give you the storyline of this game in four simple words. Flutie back, Ridgeway out. Actually, those are two different stories, and they're unrelated, but they're intriguing, both of them. Let's begin with Ridgeway. Robo kicker has been left at home in Saskatchewan. His place in this game taken by Paul McCallum. Ridgeway is convinced he's played his final game for the Green Riders. If he has, the mantle has not been passed smoothly. And months ahead of schedule in his recovery from elbow surgery, Doug Flutie returns to the Stamps today, although only to hold on kicks. But would any of us be surprised if he threw the ball in this game? I think not. Dan Kepley and Chris Cuthbert can't wait to get their voices into the myriad of plots in this one. Kep, I think the Green Riders have got a chance to make it two in a row against the Stampeders, but they must rise above this Ridgeway controversy. Well, they really do, Scott, and I think you mentioned it in the opening. Chemistry is the key thing, and the chemist to this thing is Bobby Jurison, the emotional leader of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Two sacks last week against the Calgary Stampeders. He felt that Calgary did not respect him and challenged him, and he rose to that challenge. And Chris, speaking of challenges, the quarterback for the Calgary Stampede is Jeff Garcia has one. Yeah, uh, Jurison and company did a job on Garcia last week, handing him his first pro loss. How will he respond today, and will the effect of Doug Flutie returning to the sidelines be a positive one, or just add a little more pressure to the rookie quarterback? Chris, it's about the only game I can think of in which a starting quarterback with an 8-1 and one record is overshadowed by the snap holder, but that's the kind of shadow that Doug Flutie casts. He'll be the most expensive holder in the game of football. And the BF Goodrich TA halftime today, exercising the demons in this room. The Stamps retreated to it in each of the last two seasons licking their wounds and will hook up with Dave Ridgway and Regina. He's getting as much publicity for not playing as he gets when he's in uniform, but I guess we're helping out that cause, aren't we? It's clear, crisp and dry in Calgary and this is football weather. A fine day it is to celebrate the Stampeders' birth 50 years ago to the day. Many of the Stamps' greats are singled out on the walls of the stadium and 29 of them, the ones who comprise the Stampeders' all-time dream team, are here in person to be honored at halftime today. What will have unfolded by then? So let's get started, shall we? Chris? Well, Ray Yock still looking for at least one more win to nail down the playoff spot. What an emotional victory last week for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in front of 55,000 plus. And Yock in that swirl of controversy with the decision to leave Dave Ridgway at home. Wally Buono said his team was challenged last week. He's interested to see how they'll react to the challenge in the rematch this afternoon. Well, he did make the comment that his goal every game and every week was to get better. He said last week we did not get better. It is a challenge to them personally to get better this week. Paul McCallum, the newcomer, kicks it off, and Marvin Coleman has a tough time fielding it back at the 10-yard line. Joey Yock in pursuit, and Yock pulls him down from behind. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders starting with that same emotional boost they displayed a week ago. Well, here is Jeff Garcia coming off his first pro loss, starting at quarterback for the Calgary Stampeders. They were held to just 268 yards net offense last week, and Garcia really summed it up by saying the Saskatchewan Rough Riders kicked our butts. They challenged them a lot. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders rose to the occasion. Jeff Garcia feels it's crucial on two of two things. One, get good first down production, and two, be able to rush the ball against Saskatchewan. First play from Scrooge, they fake to Stewart, and on a roll, Garcia finds Terry Vaughn. And Vaughn's up across the 45, a couple of flags fly, as a face mask will be assessed against Saskatchewan as well. Terry Vaughn, the great rookie, making his 66th catch of the year, and he is in 
reach of a thousand yard season give him 31 there so he's over 900 yards now for the year excellent play to open it up with Garcia wants to do face mask Saskatchewan 17 15 yards first down Dave Van Bellingham the safety as I said, he wants to do something as far as the naked bootleg, make something happen big, spread this Saskatchewan defense out across the field and open up by finding a big reception made by Terry Vaughn. You can see the hand just on the face mask of Terry Vaughn, and it was called. So with the 15-yard penalty, it's first down Calgary at the Saskatchewan 46. Give Stewart left side. Big hole, and Tony Stewart rumbles down to the 31-yard line. That's a pickup of 15. There is a flag down, and this one, according to Glenn Kulka, anyway, is coming back. So two plays and two penalties last week, Calgary. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, 69 Calgary after the play, 15 yards, first down. Bobby Vandalitas called for that unnecessary roughness. Now, this is something that we may see a lot of through the course of this game, Chris. I think last week, the offensive line of the Calgary Stampeders were challenged more than they had ever been. And maybe, really, they were embarrassed somewhat at the play that they made and more so how well Saskatchewan's front did against them. So it's first and ten. Penalty coming after the first down run by Stewart. And that pass knocked down. today will be along that line as you mentioned the Calgary coaching staff not happy with the effort last week by a normally very reliable offensive line centered by Jamie Crysdale even the receivers came under criticism as Wally Bono said his offense did not compete last week at Taylor Field second and ten Garcia better protection over the middle incomplete he was looking for Pee Wee Smith but it's third down for Calgary. Calgary wearing those special black jerseys for the second time. They wore them on Labor Day a year ago. And this to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Calgary Stampeder Football Club. Mark McLaughlin in to try a field goal. 41 of 49 so far this year. 83% been absolutely excellent as a kicker for the Calgary Stampede. Well, this would be his longest of the year. An attempt from 53 yards Mark up with Doug Flutie the holder. 53-yard field goal. Close. 
misses Roughrider to the ball. He was surrounded, though, by four Calgary Stampeders. And a good opening defensive series for the Stamps. Ray Elgard, another one of those emotional leaders of this, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, a guy that doesn't say a heck of a lot. He just goes out there and gives you 100% every time the ball is snapped, and he leads by example. The ever-dangerous Marvin Coleman has dropped deep to accept the punt from Brent Maddich. Coleman with a 10.9-yard punt return average on the season, and Calgary should get the ball in great field position. The left footer, Maddich. It's Pee Wee Smith who will take it across midfield. And Pee Wee dancing down to the 35-yard line. Gene Makowski brought Pee Wee Smith to the turf. But the Stampeders' second possession. Now, wait a minute. There is a flag down, and it looks like the Smith return is going to be negated by a penalty. I think we're going to see an illegal block on this, Chris. Holding, Saskatchewan 26 on the run back. Penalty declined, first down. Calgary Huddle had gone back to where they thought the ball was going to be scrimmaged on their side of midfield, but they get the good news that the call was against Dave Pitcher of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So look at the field position Jeff Garcia is going to enjoy. As the ball's been spotted at the 35 of Saskatchewan. Just three and a half minutes into this one. And we're scoreless. The special teams play is such an integral part in this game, and it helps every time that a guy like Coleman and Pee Wee can get his hands on the ball and give great field position to his starting quarterback. Give to Tony Stewart. They're trying to establish something on the ground early, but Glenn Kalko would have none of it. And he's greeted immediately 31-year-old veteran. And we'll set Saskatchewan's defense, the 3-4 alignment. Troy Alexander, the rookie, Edmonton native, has done a nice job this year, along with Kalka and Robinson. Bobby Jurison, what a great career. Ten years in the league and a fine set of linebackers. And a bunch of ball hawks in the secondary for Saskatchewan. Dale Joseph's had a good year with four interceptions. Dave Van Bellingham has had seven. Second down, and Garcia's going to pull it down and run for the first down. Oh, he took a hit from Aaron Ruffin. But we have seen in recent weeks that Garcia is resilient, and he can run the football. The ability to throw, the option to throw it, if it's not there, this guy can tuck it and get it upfield and pick up a first down. And he runs with some authority. It looks like he's been looking at some of those old Matt Dunnigan films. He runs straight up and tries to run over people and jumps up quickly and sets his huddle. 16-yard gain for Garcia. The Calgary quarterbacks have 641 yards rushing this season. That's Flutie and Garcia combined. And here's Tony Stewart up the middle, down to the 10. Behind that offensive line that has been challenged by the coaching staff today. Calgary with only 35 yards rushing last week against this Saskatchewan defense. Felt it was imperative to come in this game and establish the rush. With this man here, not so much fancy counter stuff. This is a straight line runner. Give it to him and let him take the ball in the dive. Second and two, Stewart again, down to the five. And that will be a Calgary first down. Sam Peters on the year are eighth in the league in rushing with just under 100 yards per game. But Saskatchewan vulnerable in that category. They are 10th against the run. Saskatchewan's strength on defense is its passing defense, ranked number three in the CFL. First and goal to go, Sam Peters. But the Stamps down first and goal. Saskatchewan tacklers. Ron Getson to 47, Bobby Juris and 71 combining for the tackle. John Huffnagel signaling in the plays to Garcia. Ball spotted at 
the two, second and goal. We are doing second and goal to go. Jim Deary, yeah, the defensive coordinator of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and he is a very respected coordinator in this league, and John Huffnagel, the offensive coordinator of Calgary, knew that he would come up with something new today. Second down, and a throw at the goal line, and a good defensive play by Dale Joseph to knock the ball away. And the intended receiver was Vince Danielson, so it's third and two. And Garcia's coming off. Mark McLaughlin in the field goal unit coming on. Good quick set, three-step drop. A little bit of a pick play with Sapunjas trying to cause some havoc. But Dale Joseph does a good job of fighting through the pick and the receiver to get his hands on that ball and knock it down. Calgary had the ball in the 35, so this has to be a big victory for the Saskatchewan defense. Don't be surprised if something sneaky doesn't happen early. Well, Flutie does put it down, and McLaughlin put it through, but with Doug holding, you never know. We do know that Calgary has opened the lead midway through the first quarter. Well, Saskatchewan fans, it's not 55,000, and it's not Taylor Field, but a crowd of over 30,000 on a great day for football at McMahon Stadium. Yes, there are plenty of... Green and white fans here as well. <laughs> fans of all description. It's and good, uh, it's great to see two weekends in a row. Great crowd like this. And the enthusiasm of these fans. Warren Jones ditches it off, and this is Boyko. And Boyko finds his way to midfield to drop the ball. And Calgary gets it back on defense. Greg Prayers and Dan Payne. There's a mismatch size-wise. Jackie Kellogg comes up with the loose football. Ray Yock's team has been vastly improved in that giveaway takeaway. They were minus 14 at one point this year. They were plus three coming into the game, but they give one up here to the Calgary defense. One way to slow down a big, tough rush is to dump the screen off, and they do to Boyko, but he's just unable to hold on to the ball. Kellogg comes up with it. Jackie Kellogg, a real find in the secondary for the Calgary defense and has won a starting job. Jurison and the defense dig in. First down Calgary at their own 53. Good protection so far and a completion to Vince Danielson at the Saskatchewan 50 and Aaron Ruffin's been around the football so far today. Boy, Danielson's had a great year approaching 50 catches on the season and that really is a backup behind the two super slots, Pitts and Sapunjas. And with any other ball club, Chris, he could be a starter. He just happens to be in line behind some great receivers, but he has been very patient, waiting for his chance to show what he can do. And every quarterback, whether it's Garcia or Flutie, has great confidence in getting him the ball. Second and three for the Stamps and Stewart. Department, but Tony Stewart will move the yard six. Ron Getz, number 47 on the tackle. Pick up of seven. First down, Stan Peters. Take a look at what they're doing. It's going to be a direct snap where Jeff Garcia actually fakes he's in the shotgun, but Tony Stewart is able to pick up that snap and drive that ball straight ahead and pick up the first down. A little trickery early by the Calgary Stan Peters. And Stewart with it again. Tony Stewart and dropped at the 37-5-4, and Stewart with 43 yards rushing already in this first quarter. Glenn Kulka with the tackle. Chris, the Calgary Stampeders have only had two players rush for over 100 yards during the course of the 95 season. Tony Stewart did it back in Winnipeg on September 26, 16 carries for 109 yards. The other quarter, the carrier was Jeff Garcia, who carried 13 times for 115 versus Toronto. Garcia on second and five. In trouble, got it away, and has the completion. No, no catch. And Dave Sapungus is going to argue the case. And again, Aaron Ruffin in coverage, but Glenn Kulka's mad because he should have had the sack. Well, Garcia showed you his elusive nature there. Sprint out a bit, and but also Garcia's what he's going to show you is some of the strength and his real keen of sense 
to be able to keep his eyes focused downfield. The receivers are working like crazy to get open. They used to punch his look from this angle that he made that catch, covered it up, but the official made the call differently. Yeah, a guy who's made 104 on the year can make the difficult catch. That time the call doesn't go Sapungis' way. And McLaughlin in to try a 44-yard field goal. Plenty of leg. And McLaughlin is good. 4.55 to go. First quarter. 6-0. Calgary. So the first quarter has been dominated by the Stampeders, but just two field goals to show for it so far, Kemp. Well, this has been a real key to this Saskatchewan team. Their defense has played very steadily through the course of the 95 season, particularly last week against this Calgary Stampeder team. Did an excellent job, pressured Garcia as many times as we've seen him pressured through the course of the 95 season, got in his face. Take a good look. Jim Daly taking a talk and having a talk with Ron Gantz, the middle linebacker. Also, Dale Joseph's on the side. These guys play physical, tough, aggressive defense. The two tackles in between. When you have Alexander and also Kalkanow doing a good job of getting a good push up the middle, creating some respect, and that allows Bobby Durson on the outside to usually get a one-on-one -on -one block, and he made a lot of things happen. Two sacks last week. Albert Turner and Aaron Ruffin are deep, and it's Ruffin at his 19. It's by the first man, finds a seam, and Aaron Ruffin with a great return up to midfield, but well behind the return, there are a couple of flags. And I'm not sure those clips came after Ruffin was by the blockers anyway. Six yards on the kickoff. But it is holding, and this one's coming back. Boy, Ruffin's an exciting player. Saskatchewan 83. 10 yards. First down. Willie Hinchcliffe. Backup receiver. Maria Yacht's team won the battle in the trenches last week. And Dan Payne, Hendrickson, Anderson, Mikowski, and Shorts will try to duplicate that feat again today. Rick Walters replaces Darren Joseph at running back today. Joseph with a broken finger is out. And we'll be watching Donald Narcisse, who is... Standing here and leads the CFL in receptions. But this is the other wide out, Albert Turner, up to the 35, gain of five, but penalty markers down. This is a pattern that Don Narcisse caught a lot of last week against his same Calgary defense. Wally Bono paid him quite a compliment and said, This guy is a tough receiver. He will catch the ball in traffic and he can make something happen Flipping. after the catch. Saskatchewan 15. 15 yard penalty. First down repeated. Tough first quarter for Bruce Boyko. A fumble and now the clipping call. Will Johnson is the big man on that oh, defensive man, line. He and Marvin Pope now with 11 sacks on the year. Alondra Johnson's had another all star season, the leading tackler on the Stampeders. Jackie Kellogg, the newcomer to the secondary, has a fumble recovery already in this football game. There's Big Daddy. First and 25, and Warren Jones directing traffic, and they take too long. Albert Turner was the only man in the backfield, and Warren's got to settle things down here. Catch at number six, five yards, still first down. Hey, kept last week, it was Calgary trouble with the noise and the McMahon Stadium fans giving Ray Yock's offense a taste of its own medicine. Well, a little bit of payback is all takes place in the CFL. But Chris, when you take a look down here and see what the, the, the Saskatchewan offense is trying to do, it looks like a copy picture of what the Calgary Sam Peters does on offense. Warren Jones steps up and fires and Ray Yock has it. Ray Yock, Ray Elgar. 39-yard line, Elgar. Has the first down. That's well. Let's see. He's going to be close. He's within a yard of the first down. Well, the old pro Elgar, 36 years of age, with his 50th catch, and that's the 10th straight year that Elgar has had at least 50 catches in a season. Amazing how quickly Gray Yacht got out of that uniform and got back in that coach's gear on the side. But that just shows you some of his quickness. Oh, I deserve that. <laughs> Rick Walters on second and one. Broke the tackle, broke another. And gets outside. And there'll be an extra flag, too, as Coleman and Walters were jostling. And 
Saskatchewan get a running game going without Darren Joseph. McClanahan is heated up. Darren Joseph. And the he did. Base, base mask is against, against Rick Walters on that tackle being made. But it would be after the first down was made. So from the spot, it'll take it back. Greg Knox just gets run Major right foul. over. Saskatchewan, after the first down was made, 15 yards, first down. So the first down stands, but they'll mark it back at the 35. Darren Joseph shattering a finger during practice this week is expected to have it operated on. Rick Walters being around the team through the course of this season knows the system and actually the end of that last play shows that he can make things happen. Well, Elgar can't bring this one down. And it'll be second down. Alondra Johnson in the middle of it. Alondra Johnson, 51, defensively. Well, he's had a great year again. Wally Buono, very complimentary today about his consistent effort. Not just this year, but uh, over the last few years. He's led the team in tackles for five straight seasons. Gary Rogers and Ron Getz, the two linebackers, having a little 
we'll talk of what went on in that zone coverage, making sure that they get their assignments correct. Gary Rogers, 6'3", 225 out of Vanderbilt. Good look at Ray Elgard on the sideline. Second and 10, Stan Peters. Well, he must have been thrilled with last week. A tremendous scene at Taylor Field, but they still need one more win to ensure a playoff spot. There's a deep pass, falling incomplete, and once again, Garcia looking at a third down situation. He was trying to hook up with Tyrone Williams that time, who will get more playing time today with Alan Pitts out of the game. A viral infection keeping the number three receiver in the CFL out today. So Mark McLaughlin is called upon for the third time this afternoon. Chris, if he is successful with this, it will give him 201 points for the 95 season. It will be his sixth career 200-plus season. Got it. Final play of the first quarter. And McLaughlin has nailed three today. And the home side likes what they see so far. It's 9-0 Calgary after one quarter. Gorgeous, gorgeous autumn afternoon in Calgary. Dusting of snow overnight, but perfect football conditions. And uh, looks like a couple of uh, products from the Dan Kepley hat shot. We've got we got the wheat field and the horse. Right now the horse. Why are you looking at me when you're speaking of the horse? Here's Albert Turner. Up to the 30-yard line. Well, Saskatchewan didn't have much offense in that first quarter. And uh, the big difference, 148 yards for the Stamps, 54 for Saskatchewan. And when they had it going a bit, that fumble by Bruce Boyko turned it over. And in the time of possession, Calgary having the ball almost two times more than Saskatchewan did. But the Saskatchewan was credited the defense only gave up three field goals. Under the shotgun, stepped up in pursuit is Ray Biggs and Jones tumbling into the snow. That was Andre Owens who was chasing him down. The tackle made by didn't look like anybody's hurt down there.
Garcia goes to the air and has a completion over the middle of Vince Danielson, who so far today has been a favorite target. Down by the riders, number 74. As I said earlier, this guy paid his dues and has really earned the respect of the quarterbacks. Sure hands, and the one thing even Dave Sapunja said that why this guy is so good is what he can do after he catches a football. He had five catches for 61 yards last week. Still looking for his first 100-yard game of the season. And it's first and 10. Calgary at the 49-yard line. Garcia throwing in the flat. It's complete. Pee Wee Smith's knocked out of bounds. Ryan Randall in coverage. Pee Wee with his 51st catch. Jeff Garcia, a little slow to get up after that last completion. 13 yards of the play, first and 10 Stampeders at well, the right of 48. Garcia has taken some punishment over recent weeks. Let's see what happened here. Right at the end, that's Glenn Kalka getting cut from behind and then he falls into the knee of Jeff Garcia from the blind side. Jeff Garcia does strike me as a very tough guy. He gets up and gets right back into the play. Stewart over the 45, near the 43. Tony Stewart close to five for Stewart. As the Stamps have been able to move the football on the ground against Saskatchewan so far this afternoon. Second down and six at the 40. First and ten situation. Two backs. Sean Daniels was in the backfield. Now Sean leaves the game and taking his place, Tyrone Williams, with that six receiver set, really opens up the offensive possibilities for Jeff Garcia. Pressure on Garcia over the middle. It's complete. And Dave Sapuntis is down to the 21. 105th catch on the year for Sapuntis, and he is the league leader in yardage. With that catch now at 1,540 yards. And 28, Johnny Brady. Five catches for 78 yards last week and one touchdown. But here's where Sapunjas really excels. Being able to work one-on-one -on -one and then sliding away, finding the open spot, and making himself a big target for Jeff Garcia to hit easily. That's not a 100-yard game since Labor Day. but flags down and the play didn't get off. Time comp violation. Calgary number seven, five yards, still first down. So they'll move it back to the 26. First and 15. And it'll be first and 15 as Garcia takes the signals from Huffnagel. Jim Daly, Saskatchewan defense, shows a lot of different alignments, a lot of different formations. The dime back, six defensive back, really trying to make Calgary think. Swing it out to Stewart, and that time Ron gets wasn't pulled a bit. He met Stewart right at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second down and 15. Well, Huck Huffnagel talked about the recognition problems Saskatchewan can produce. And speaking of recognition, Ron Getz does a good job of recognizing that little swing pass, then using what he possesses, great speed and quickness and anticipation to get to the play and make it happen short of a first down. Second and long. Yeah, they need Stewart one, second and 14. overthrown brings up third down and once again Mark McLaughlin who has kicked three and four attempts already comes back the Calgary Stampeders have had chances today to put this one out of reach early and Saskatchewan's defense has stiffened down deep Jeff Garcia probably got hit 15 or 16 times during the course of last week's game those big five horses up front doing a good job of giving him time and protection. From the 32-yard line, McLaughlin is good again. He's four for five, and it's 12-0 Calgary. Back at McMahon Stadium, Wally Bono's team up by a dozen over Ray Yock's Rough Riders. 
here early in the second quarter. And while he had to admit, he said, this is not the same team that we started out with in July. He said, because of injuries, fatigue, maybe motivation, and losing some of the key players that we have lost, it's a different team. Different game from a week ago. Anthony McClanahan gunning down Warren Jones that time. Well, McClanahan, Wally Bono was talking about a young Alondra Johnson. And he shows you his raw speed and power here. 6'2", 222 pounds out of Washington State. Possesses great quickness. Wally says, you know, he's just young. He's like a young thoroughbred. He'll run and run and run and play and he'll make this happen. He doesn't really understand this game completely yet. But when he can chase you down and he can make something happen and he can hurt you when he hits you. Well, this defense has been revved up from the start. So far this afternoon, Will Johnson and Pete Shorts having words as play was whistled down at the snap of the ball. Time to go. Saskatchewan number six. Five yards. Still second down. So they'll move it back five more. And it'll be second and 21. Wally Bono in the defense. Frank Spaziani doing a good job giving Warren Jones a lot of different Jones over the middle and Walters out of the backfield can't hang on. Matt Finley was around the football and he's around Walters right now. Matt Finley doing a great job in the middle after being moved from the outside linebacker in his 10th season in the CFL. And he says, this may be it. He says, and I want to go out with a big bang. And the only way that that's going to take place is to be holding up the Grey Cup, having a little champagne at the end of the season. Peewee's back. And Maddich on third down. Smith from his 44. Got through the hole and got across midfield. Stampeders have had great field position. Saskatchewan came up with the ball, but after the whistle. Canadian Tire has guaranteed low prices every day on Moto Master batteries, so you can get one whenever you need one, and you won't get left out in the cold. Well, kept so far, it's been all Calgary. They haven't pushed it into the end zone yet, but that Saskatchewan defense has been on the field an awful long time in this first half. Bobby Durson, again, as I mentioned in the opening, two sacks last week have not been seen in the backfield of Calgary Stampeders so far in, the, in this first half. Tony Stewart, the ball carrier, down to the 50. Pickup of two to three. But Chris, it really is a, a tough situation. This Calgary team has gotten so good the past few years. They jumped out so far ahead in the race after a while, clinched the first place position. Then all of a sudden, now you're trying to figure out each week, do you go out there and play for pride? Do you play for self-improvement? What do you play for? But now it's getting down to the real part of the season, the playoffs, where they have to be able to turn it up for 60 minutes to be able to win in a playoff situation. Second and eight. Another time count violation. They'll mark it back by. Calgary number seven. Five yards. Still second down. Well, Wally Bono had an interesting point today. He's not sure there's a connection with playing well or not playing well today or next week and how that relates to the playoffs. And the reason he felt like that was the playoff game against Saskatchewan last year. They totally dominated the Rough Riders. He thought they were as ready as they possibly could be for the Western Final. And then the BC Lions came along. Garcia on a roll. that we see a lot of heat turned up on Jeff Garcia as he tries to sprint out, moves the pocket. Ron, Ron Gantz, the middle linebacker, scrapes from that middle position, blows inside, and Gary Rogers, the outside linebacker, comes up with a big turnover, gives Warren Jones a pretty good field first position. And ten, first and ten. And Garcia struggles off as Jones goes to work. Has time. Donald Darcy, so the streak's alive at 143 games, and for Narcisse, 
Catch number 109 on the year. The most popular rider. He may be one of the most underrated wide receivers ever to play in the CFL. 143 consecutive catch games. The last two games coming in here, he has caught 24 passes for 216 yards and three touchdowns. First down, Saskatchewan. Jones got outside of Lumber. Johnson gets it down for power. They get the 10. Great play by Jones to elude the rush of A.J. And the Riders fans have their first play to really cheer about. 28 yards, Jones to Farthing. Just to pick. 
pick up a, a little more of, of what you were asking me. I had a chance to sit down and talk with Bobby Jurison before the game, and Bobby says, hey, I love Dave Bridgeway. I've known him for 10 years. I know him as well as my own brother. It hurts, and it bothers us about this, but he says, I know I'm seeing the small picture. I have to see the larger picture, if that's possible. Right now, it's hard to see that, and, and I, can, I can accept that.
the Greg first men downfield. Well, Frank Spazzietti's defense has done a nice job so far on Warren Jones, although that last series by Saskatchewan netted some points. The Italian connection, Frank Spazzietti, Bob Spazzietti, and also Wally Bono are all there working together on a very tough defense. Here's Elgar. Big Ray took a leg Gonzalo Floyd finished him off with Will Johnson underneath. Yeah, you go into Bob Vespasiani's office and he's got those big posters of the Godfather 1 and 2. <laughs> There's just a couple of things I want to talk about here too. You come on in and we're going to speak about this. He's pretty good about it. Didn't know Elvis was Italian. <laughs> Well, you, you wouldn't test him, but he has been around this league, and he's been around the CFL, and Bob Vespasiani has seen it all. Second and six, looks like Calgary jumps. And a completion for a first down, pending the penalty to Donald Narcisse. Well, you were talking about being underrated as they sort out the penalty. I found it surprising, not only Narcisse, fifth all-time, among receivers in the CFL, but first among wide receivers all time. So Calgary's offside, but there's a holding call against Saskatchewan. And that'll negate the Narcisse catch. Offside. Calgary holding Saskatchewan 63. Five-yard difference. Second down. Scott Hendrickson guilty of the hold. Our official attendance so they move it back five yards. 33,258. They just announced the attendance over 33,000 here. Thank you for the second largest crowd of the season after the Labor Day sellout. For this 50th anniversary day for the Calgary San Peters. Because he was ignored. Holding. 
Saskatchewan 66, 10 yards, still first down. Mike Anderson. Big Mike Anderson, 12-year veteran, playing his 204th consecutive game. Getting called for this holding. But I think that happens a lot. With the, the big thing, getting Ray Elgard involved back into the offense, too, is the fact that Narcisse has become such a weapon. It does help to open up that middle and stretch the defense out across the field, and it gives Ray Elgard a lot more room to maneuver in the middle.
took a knock. Well, he's prepared to do this. This is a young quarterback, and he knows he's going to get hit. Number 47, that's Ron Guest, the middle linebacker, comes and just plants it right in the middle of Garcia's chest. But he throws almost a perfect ball. Shaky start for Saskatchewan, but uh, they've given Calgary all they can handle in this second quarter. Second down. Over the middle and off the fingertips of Terry Vaughn. So it'll be third down. And at the 46-yard line, Mark McLaughlin will come on, facing a 53-yard attempt. Now Mark is three for six from the 50-plus mark through the course of the 95 season. Missed one earlier today from that range, and this would equal his season high. Well, actually, it'll be a 52-yarder.
punch just grabs a hold of him. I don't think there's any pass interference call there. Mark McLaughlin. Well, I'll back the official that there was pass interference. It was whether or not it was intentional or not. You're from the old school that if there's no broken bones, there's no foul. No blood, no foul. Absolutely. But Mark McLaughlin has kicked another field goal, and it's a nine-point lead, and Aaron Ruffin will think about the fumble. Gave Calgary a chance to put three more up. It has been one of those halves for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, one of those bend but not break situations. And they have kept the Calgary Stampeders off of the scoreboard of majors. After a slow start, Saskatchewan's hung pretty tough here in this second quarter, and they're very much in this football game. And their defense, Saskatchewan's defense, has been on the field a long time. Warren Jones has not been able to really sustain a lot of possession drives. Final play of this first half, Rick Walters with the carry, and that will do it. Ray Yock and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders need another win to qualify for the postseason, but they trail Wally Bono and the Stampeders by nine points at the half. Welcome to the BF Goodrich TA Halftime. Now, here's your host, Scott Oak. Through 30 minutes in Calgary, Stampeders lead by nine. At field level, they're just now getting ready to march out the Stampeder Dream Team. These are the 29 players, past and present, voted by Calgary fans to be the best Stampeder players ever. The football credentials in this crowd are unmatched. There are MVPs, Grey Cup champions, and Hall of Famers. They've got every era of Stampeder football covered from the 40s through to the 90s. Put them all together in their prime, and who could beat them? There isn't a player in the game today who wouldn't cringe at the prospect of being thumped by middle linebacker Wayne Harris, and he thumped lots of them in the 60s. Larry Robinson kicked field goals and made the team as a defensive back, the one who still leads the Stampeders in interceptions. John Helton had nine brilliant seasons in Calgary, an all-star in every one of them from 69 to 78. Tom Perzani was the go-to guy here from 73 to 83. He turned defenders inside out. In 75, Willie Burton was named the best player in the land, give or take a James Sykes the Stamps haven't had as prolific a rusher since. Terry Irvin is representative of a Stampeder tradition of standout defensive backs. The tradition includes Ron Hopkins, although he earned all-time great status for his work on kick returns. Six members of the Dream Team are still playing. Will Johnson has been around only since 89, but he's the Stamps' all-time sack leader. Daryl Hall did enough in three seasons with the Stampeders from 90 to 92 to be named one of their all-time great defensive backs. You needn't imagine Dave Sapunge is in his prime because that's exactly where he is, along with Alan Pitts, both of them already over the magical 100 catch total this season. And for a no-brainer selection, quarterback Doug Flutie. He's only been here since 92, but he's already all-time everything. Doug Flutie won a five current Stampeders voted to the Dream Team. Apparently only one other quarterback even got a vote. Current Stamps are used to winning, aren't they? 14 and two through 16 weeks. And life should be good for any team cruising atop the standings, as are the Stampeders, unless you're tortured by recent history. The Calgary locker room should be a happy place, but there are demons here that need to be exercised. Demons from each of the last two years. championships. And 
And so the question is, have the Stamps, most of whom have lived through the last two years, learned anything? Anytime you play playoff football, there's pressure. Now, obviously, we understand what transpired over the last couple of years. I think the players uh, are very sincere in their efforts to go out there and, uh, and get to the great this year. You can't be cautious. You have to go out and uh, expect to win every game, and this team does. And uh, we're not expecting to lose. We're expecting to win. But playoff losses in each of the last two seasons have almost made Calgary fans forget the Stamps won the Grey Cup in 92. Late season losses in both 93 and 94 almost seemed to be a bad omen. The Stamps suffered one last week, but in the rematch today against the Green Riders, they lead by nine through 30 minutes. The B.F. Goodrich TA Halftime Report will continue in just a moment. time in the CFL. The league's top teams turn up the intensity. Paul McCallum did boot a 43-yarder, and uh, he looked good doing it in the first half. Chris, let's focus on this game now. Uh, Saskatchewan's defense has almost played a full game in the first half alone, and no one knows it better than the Calgary quarterback. You know, Jeff Garcia has been battered again, and this is the second straight week, and uh, I think Calgary's going to be glad that this uh, season series is going to be over in 30 minutes because Garcia's taken some licks. Does a good job as he tries to get outside. Ron Getz from the middle linebacking position, and they're trying to put heat on him from all different phases. Jim Daly, the defensive coordinator, trying to confuse this Calgary offense ever so slightly. Oh, we had a little debate in the booth late in the first half after the Aaron Ruffin fumble. Uh, was it pass interference or not, and should it have been spotted down at the one-yard line? Ruffin against the punches here. Ruffin does a good job of getting his head turned around. The one thing where he's guilty of, the interference is going to be called. He gets the right hand up on top of the shoulder of Sponge, and then it is called unintentional. Well, Ruffin dropped the football here, and uh, this is what gave Calgary a chance for one last field goal in the first half. But it was a game where uh, fumbles really dictated the course of the first half. Yeah, five uh, field goals by Mark McLaughlin. Uh, the difference in this game, the stakes are high for the Riders. Uh, you have to look for their offense to turn it up a notch in the second half. So that's the BF Goodrich TA Halftime Report. Stand by now for the second half. Coming up from Calgary with the Stamps up by nine. <laughs> in Calgary, moments away from the second half between the Stampeders and Green Riders, and with us now is one of the charter members of the Dream Team, just honored at halftime at field level. John Helton joins us. John, congratulations on your selection. Thanks a lot, Scott. Let me ask you this. Prevailing opinion is that if they put all you guys together in your prime, you'd never be beaten. Do you agree? Oh, there'd probably be a bunch of all-stars on the other team that uh, have something to say about that, so, uh, and, and of course, we wouldn't all fit, so we might lose a game in 10 or 15 years. Dan Kepley tells me that uh, you look like you can still play and beat him on every play. Well, Dan's up, uh, absolutely the smartest guy I know, and uh, he's right about that. <laughs> Fortunately, you guys played on the same side of the ball, so you never met. John, I want to thank you for your time once again. Congratulations on being honored today. Thanks a lot, Scott. All right, uh, let's go now to Chris and Dan as we're set for the start of the second half. And for youngsters who uh, didn't see John Helton play, let's uh, reconfirm. Uh, he's on that all-time Calgary team for a reason. Tell hey, you what, the, the, one of the greatest athletes that I have ever seen, one of the most physical men, but also one of the biggest class acts that I have ever known in the CFL. Aaron Ruffin gets things going in the second half Number with the kickoff return Aaron out Ruffin. to the 32-yard line, 14 yards after the McLaughlin kickoff. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders start this second half at McMahon Stadium down by nine. And they have not won here at McMahon since 1989. And Tom Burgess will start at quarterback in the second half. Tom Burke. 
Burgess in relief for Saskatchewan. The numbers for the first half showed the edge to Calgary, although after the first quarter, things started to even off a bit. One thing that's a little off there, that 65 yards rushing, Calgary was having a good first day, for, I mean, first quarter, rushing this ball against the, the defense of uh, Saskatchewan. They got away from it a bit. Flag down as Maddich boots it downfield. And Marvin Coleman. Boy, he can turn on a dime, can he? One man to beat. Gets by Maddich. Yeah, yeah. But coming across, Coleman was stopped. Fumbled the football. Now let's see. Now he fumbled the ball inside the field, but I think the last people to touch the ball were some Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I think it's all for naught, Scott. Chris, because I think that for a fact that the Calgary defense was offside. Offside, Calgary 44, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, I have to admit something, though. Scott pays me money every time that I do mention his name on air. <laughs> well, that was a costly offside. Now that we've got the introductions out of the way, we have Wally Buono and the defense <laughs> back on the field for Calgary. So a costly offside penalty negates a big punt return for Calgary and gives Tom Burgess another crack at it. Drop play and Walters finds some room and he's up near midfield. Tripped up by Gerald Vaughn. But Walters has a first down, a run of 12 yards. He came into the game with just five carries, 36 yards on the season. Simon Fraser University and Tom Burgess whose last action was against Baltimore and it was a good game for Burgess 26 of 44 278 yards and a pair of touchdowns throws the out and there's Elbert Turner working against Al Jordan it's another first down for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Turner is slow to get up Turner's one of those receivers that had eight catches for only 62 yards last week, but the ball was being thrown in his direction. Tom Burgess can throw that wide side out. Good, strong arm. Turner does a good job of looking that ball in, holding on to it, and picking up the first down. First and ten, Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan now. Super. 
for man-to-man -man coverage. Knocked out of the middle on the safety blitz, and everybody just presses up, gets in the face, and runs step for step down the field. Tom Burgess, after the offside, took advantage, and a pretty encouraging start for him in a relief roll, second half. And Paul McCallum, two for two, will attempt a 25-yarder. today from McMahon Stadium in Calgary where the CFL leading Calgary Stampeders own a six point advantage against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in a battle for a playoff spot. And a short return of that line drive kickoff by Tony Stewart just 11 yards on the run back after a 62 yard kickoff Joe Toth the newcomer out of the University of North Dakota making the tackle. Well, Jeff Garcia has uh, been hobbled today. He uh, has been hit repeatedly in the last couple of weeks. And uh, there are the numbers through the first half of football. Last week, his numbers were 18 for 38, 233 yards, two touchdowns, but he also threw, threw two picks. So Saskatchewan's keeping him at under 50% efficient. Second half. Tony Stewart, Tony Stewart, the intended receiver out of the backfield, and Dale Joseph was there defensively. Here's how he's mixed it up with his receivers today, and uh, nobody has been a favorite target, although Terry Vaughn is the leader in yardage today. Tell you what, when you've got those numbers against the high-powered Calgary offense, you've done a good job defensively. Well, more, more importantly, when you've kept them out of scoring a major touchdown through the course of 30 minutes, you've done a pretty good job against this high-powered offense. Second and ten. Great balance. You know it's unbelievable. He leads the league in receiving, receiving this year yardage-wise. He has not been picked as the offensive player of the week once in the Calgary St. Peter's offense. So coming into this game, it's, it's, it's a little funny. Narcisse had 108 carries and 108 receptions, and Sponge had 104 coming into the game. Time foul violation. Calgary number seven, five yards, still first down. Boy, there's been a lot of time if count violations on either team, side row 40, the last 12, couple of weeks. What a hot air balloon ride. Compliments. And they'll move it back five. 8.42 to go. Third today, quarter, a six-point Stampeder lead. The south end of it. Man, don't forget to bring your program and your lucky tip. But once again today, Jeff First Garcia has found this Saskatchewan defense very tough to crack. And he overthrows Terry Vaughn, who takes a hit there. And probably wishes he didn't. Well, there's a, a time and a place to get physical about things, and, and you have to have controlled aggression. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, Saskatchewan number two, 15 yards, first down. A little different change in the formation, number two, Terry Vaughn coming out of the backfield. The ball is clearly overthrown. And number two, Terrell Homer comes up and just to let Vaughn know that he was there. Gets him 15 yards. Keeps possession to the Calgary Stampeders after they had stopped them deep in their own end. Bye. 
Saskatchewan. Jeff Garcia stood in the pocket. And he takes another big hit. I think this time LeBrant Robinson comes in just as he releases the ball, gets the arms up, throws into the ground, doesn't get a penalty, holds those hands up. And I think they, everybody feels is the defensive player. As soon as you hit the quarterback, if you throw your hands up, you're not going to get a flag. That case, it is at least worked. Brian Randall, well, second punt of the game for yeah, Tony Martino. And a 51-yarder the first time. Blasts another. And Aaron Ruffin will start it back. It's across the 25-yard line. That's where Saskatchewan will put the ball in play on offense when we return to the game. plus at McMahon Stadium, seeing a defensive duel between the Calgary Stampeders and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Saskatchewan has gone to their backup quarterback, Tom Burgess, in the second half to try and get the Rough Riders the lead. They have a field goal in the second half, and now Burgess going to the air. And open Rick Walters, but a flag down. Late flag on the outside from the back, Judge. Maybe some illegal contact against Calgary. Illegal contact on an eligible receiver. Calgary 17, 10 yards, first down. Marvin Coleman. Now kept by us, Wally bought all this today. I'm going to ask you. Here's Calgary, dominated the first half of the year, and then in recent weeks, they trailed Winnipeg, just scrambled to come back. They trailed Toronto, were pushed by the Argos. They trailed BC at the half before coming back. Lost last week, having trouble today. Let's watch this play as it's out in the flat. There's Donald Darcy's with a catch near a first down. Is this a sign that Calgary's coming back to the rest of the league? Or is it a sign that Saskatchewan and the other teams have had more to play for in recent weeks? Well, I, I think the second is, is the case in this situation. These guys set out in July as being a very dominant force in the CFL. They did extremely well, and they jumped out into this race so far ahead that all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, some things have taken, taken place. Fatigue, injury, you lose Doug Flutie, you lose Alan Pitts, you lose Kenton Leonard. You lose Stu Laird for the last three weeks. Those are key players off of your roster, and you have, other than pride, second down, baby. not a lot of things to play for out there. You have clinched first place. It makes it very difficult to have to go out there and to go out there, not have to, but to go out there very willingly and excitedly, go out there and win football games. Now it's the time that they are really starting to understand some of the things that are, that are ahead of them. They need, this is a big challenge for them. I need, they need to come back, bounce back after a loss last week oh against God, the same God, team, God, get ready because they may not take, for whatever reason, they may not take Toronto very seriously next week Friday. receiver. That was a heck of an effort. This is what you get from Donna Narcisse. Every time out there is a heck of an effort. Full stride, fighting with the defender, and so close. A little push right at the end. The number 27, Al Jordan, comes down, makes the catch, but not I'll tell you what, I like the call too. Second and inches, why not? Oh, absolutely. You've got to go for it right now. Go big or go home because you're fighting for that playoff spot and Ray Yock wants to be there. We saw Saskatchewan play Toronto a few weeks ago and Ray Yock looked at the schedule, two with Baltimore, two with Calgary, and then they'll close against BC and he said, we'll find out how good we are or can be. Territory. 540 left, third quarter. And that's 
That's a gain of six. It'll be second and four for Saskatchewan. And Walters has done a pretty good job relieving Darren Joseph today. Does a terrific job, and I think Burgess does a good job of making a play selection there. Knowing that Calvary Stampeders comes out of good pass rush.
The Saskatchewan defense with interceptions, seven this year. He is the last player in Saskatchewan history to have seven picks. The last guy was Pat Glenn Suter, who had eight in 1991. Here's Garcia, second and ten, looking deep. Tyler Williams, and it's bounded away. Nice knockdown there by Terrell Ulmer, step for step. Williams has the size advantage, but Ulmer got the job done at 5'9", 180, up against six foot five Tyrone Williams. Having an opportunity to talk with John Huffnagel about Ty Williams. He talks about what great athletic ability he has. He still is just not quite comfortable in this philosophy and this organization yet out there with the system that the Calgary Stampeders use. And you can see again, Jeff Garcia pays the price after releasing the football. Well, Martino's done a good job when called upon today. Ruffin. Field. It's one of the phases of the game that Coach Buono had said had really improved since 1994. They're special teams. Younger guys had to have matured, better team speed, better coverage. He was very, very happy with this phase of the game. Well, a 42-yard punt by Tony Martino. I'll tell you what, Martino's finished. He might be a kicking coach for Calgary. <laughs>
สี่
Narcisse and Jordan. Little hand battling. Jordan gave him a couple extra slaps right in the chest. Penalty was called. Al Jordan, who came to the Calgary Stampeders by the first round of the Las Vegas Dispersal Draft. You know, he's got to fill some pretty big shoes out there. The Calgary Stampeders lost both of their corners, Dennis Kraft and Junior Thurman. Kraft going to in Indianapolis and Junior Thurman to, Junior Thurman to Birmingham. Well, Dave Yule making the call and uh, forward pass interference. Calgary 17. First down. Well, he said 17 Coleman, but we saw it was Jordan. And Coleman's giving him an earful. Hey, it wasn't me. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> But in any event, it's a first down, Saskatchewan. And the ball at the right 43. First down, the pitch to Walters. And oh boy. Rick Walters meets Marvin Pope. It's one of his one. Zen meets Big Daddy. But there are some offsides that took place at the top of the screen. Walters and that guy, Big Daddy Marvin Polk. Well, Walters stopped after he hit Polk. Look at the feet just at the top of your screen. You can see how everybody's offside. Boyko hears a whistle. He stops. Big Daddy doesn't stop. Well, they're calling it against Saskatchewan, and Tom Burgess is heated up. So it's first and 15. Work, Let's hear from you. Make a noise. Back at the 38. And they've got the McMahon Stadium crowd whipped up into a frenzy trying to make noise a factor here. Burgess, Elgar, Big Cats. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. One moment, please. Moment, please.
Ooh. Right through his body, doesn't catch it in his hands. Tries to make a little bit of move and get out of the way before he makes the catch. And it's an incompletion. Second and ten. From the Calgary 19, six receivers go out. And it's incomplete. He delivered it behind Dave Sabunjus and Garcia. Apparently is really being hampered by that sprained ankle. He's two for eight in the second half. Well, with, with the right ankle giving him the problem, that's the plant ankle, and that's where he's going to come back, Stan. Plant that foot and push off for it, and it creates the velocity that the football actually travels on. If not, it changes his old throwing mechanics. Now he starts using all of his arm as opposed to some of his body to throw that. In that case, it was thrown well behind the intended receiver, Dave Sapunjas. So Martino gets set to kick to Ruffin. Now Ruffin's had some great returns. If Saskatchewan is able just to make their blocks and not get a penalty, should get great field position. Ruffin from his own 53. Crosses midfield and then is drilled back. Good job downfield. Number 33, Aaron Greg Frayers was there. Four-yard return after a 38-yard punt. Greg and Tom Burgess with great field position. Under 10 minutes to go. Saskatchewan needs a win to nail down a playoff spot. And this is as good as time as any, but Frank Spaziani and the Calgary defense trying to protect that lead. If Saskatchewan doesn't get it done today, they've got to go to BC next week and win. Plenty of time. Not trying to force it into the end zone. Nick and Diamond. Big first down. Oh, he's going up top. And had a man open. Rick Walters was there. And Burgess couldn't get him the ball. Okay, so what do I know about it? <laughs> Burgess has the receiver wide open, delivers the ball. And that's Anthony McClanahan who comes in there with full force and puts Tom Burgess right on his back. That may be why that pass was off the mark quite a bit. Well, Saskatchewan this year in the fourth quarter has not been that effective. It's been a great quarter for Calgary, but those stats are for the past games. Tom Burgess could change it today, but not here. said we have a championship defense and you get the feeling that it's Calgary's defense that's going to be left to win this game today. Big Daddy just comes off the corner, arm under, big powerful rush. Tom Burgess steps up but not before Big Daddy can get his paws on him and put him down as you said for the third sack, his 13th of the year. Under nine to go as Maddich fielded the low snap. Terry Vaughn is back. Ball bouncing down there, and he has it at the eight. And Rod gets, wraps him up, and throws him down. So Calgary has the lead, but they're backed up here in the fourth quarter. Defensive tussle between the Stampeders and the Rough Riders, 15-12 Calgary. Jeff Garcia hampered by a sprained ankle. Hanging in there.
intentional. Saskatchewan 33. Ten yard penalty. First down. You can see the look of dismay on Ray Yacht's face. Well, one time this year, Yacht called Ruffin his MVP for his great work on specialty teams and as the nickelback. Well, John Huffnagel's team now is at least got some breathing room on offense up at the 31 thanks to those two penalties. And now, a short pass to Pee Wee Smith and Glenn Kulka brings him down. With the football, just outside the 40-yard line. Good hitch pattern, but just great Glenn pursuit Kulka by the big guy, Glenn Kulka, 265, getting down the line of scrimmage and being able to stop that for three. about seven yards. Pee Wee, such a dangerous threat. Anytime that he catches a pass like that, he just needs a little bit of a seam, and he can make big things happen. Well, 68's been busy today. In the heart of this defensive effort, Tony Stewart on second and three will have the first down. Troy Alexander, the kid out of Edmondson with the tackle. And the clock running here with 7.05 to go. And now it stops as Kulka's put a knee down. Number 68, Glenn Kulka, the injured And they'll runner. check his right knee. Chris, there was a time, I think about 19... Uh, 79-1980, Glenn Kalko was playing junior football uh, in the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, he came out for the Edmonton Eskimos as a linebacker, an outside linebacker, and he came to our camp a couple of years. <laughs> the, the young boy has grown up. Well, he gets attention, and this is a critical drive of the football game. Uh, Three-point lead for the Stampeders has been holding up, but you wonder for how long. And an onus for Garcia and this offense to get the ball moving. Today's cup sponsor, big name in home electronics. Well, the Saskatchewan fans are getting anxious now. They're ready to strap on their helmets for the last seven minutes. Uh, Jurison conferring with Jim Daly at the sidelines. What a great game plan they've had again today against the high-powered Calgary offense. The defense has really been out there quite a bit through the course of this game. Offense kind of took over a bit in the third quarter. They give them a, a break and spell. Let them catch their wind a bit. Two big penalties have aided the possession drive so far in these last two series of the Calgary Stampeders. First and ten, Calgary. So first down for the Stampeders their 42-yard line, and Garcia over the middle incomplete, and that was Danielson, the intended Garcia receiver. Pass intended for number 88, Vince Danielson goes incomplete. On the coverage, number As Jeff Garcia stands in, a lot of times Saskatchewan wants to come with a little bit of heat, takes the safety out of the middle. The receivers of the Stampeders' key is Read that, fill in up over the middle. Garcia just was unable to get the ball into Danielson's hands. Bobby Jurison moves up onto the line with the absence of Polka. Second and ten, and Garcia floats one. Incomplete. That was intended for Sapunjus, but uh, missed the intended target by about five yards. So it's third down. Calgary will have to kick it away with 6.31 left. Tell you what, if Saskatchewan does make the playoffs, I think they serve notice in the last few weeks that Baltimore will have its hands full. Baltimore found out firsthand in those back-to-back -back games. They sweep by both times, but they had their hands full. That first game at home, they, uh, Saskatchewan lost 28 to 24, and away in Baltimore at Memorial Stadium, they lost 29-27. Calgary number eight, 
15 yard penalty, first down. Well, once again, we want to look ahead to next weekend. Coming up on Saturday, the Breeders' Cup, a great day of horse racing from Belmont Park in New York. Brian Williams and Jim Bannum will be there to cover it for CBC Sports. It all starts at 11 Eastern. Chris. Thank you, Scott. Down to the stretch run here. Tom Burgess and the Rough Riders first down at their own 53. And over the middle, Albert Turner with the catch. At the 45, nailed by Alondra Johnson. And Tom Burgess has finally gone into the Dan Kepley playbook. Well, this is where this is where Tom Burgess, I think, really does shine. He's a smart quarterback, reads defenses extremely well. Now he has some receivers that can go down there. Like Turner, like Elgard and Narcisse, find the open spot, work it behind the linebackers, and if Burgess has time, you get that kind of result. Clock running with 5.15 to go. First down, Saskatchewan. And Burgess going up top, and Arbol picked off. Marvin Coleman, the closest man to the ball. And no offense to Burgess, but I like your play selection better. <laughs> no offense to him either, because I, I've never, you know, as, as a middle linebacker, you don't have any idea what it feels like to be a quarterback and be under that kind of pressure. But I think right now, going back, let's do what has been successful and try to make those first downs, get ourselves in a position, not create second and long, because second and long, Calgary's going to come after us and put some heat on us. Make the first down now is the crucial thing. Second and ten, and Burgess over the middle, and that was almost picked by Alondra Johnson as they went back to Albert Turner. Third down, and Ray Yock has a decision. He's going to send out McCallum, and what a spot for Paul McCallum. Ray Yock made that controversial decision to replace Dave Ridgway, and now he's sending on the new place kicker to attempt a 52-yard field goal to tie the game. Setting up from 51 yards out. He said he was tired of waiting for Louis Pasaglia to retire in B.C. Should this 
final playoff spot. They would just move one point ahead of Winnipeg, who finishes next week against Ottawa. Saskatchewan with their final game at BC Place Stadium. And the Rough Riders showed yesterday that Winnipeg doesn't have a sure touch next week in the final game there. Those are pretty tough conditions to play a football game. Yeah. And Ottawa did come out on the best of that game. First down for Burgess. On a roll, throwing a completion, but just a short game to Narcisse. That's better than the, the play that they originally had called. Was a sense that they wanted to play the screen. It was covered well by Shreko Zizakovic. Forced it Burgess to have to get outside, and he at least made something of nothing with the completion to Narcisse. Five field goals for Paul McCallum, five field goals for Mark McLaughlin, and 33,000 plus at McMahon Stadium have seen a in the past. 
past when we talked about the right foot in the plant trying to get some velocity on the ball. When he can air it out and hang it up and put some air underneath the ball, it doesn't affect him. But this one, he's got to throw on a frozen rope out there. Danielson is wide open over the middle in between two Saskatchewan defenders, and the ball is slightly thrown behind him. So second and ten, a big play here. Yes. 
special receiver in Ty Williams that came up with two great catches during the course of this long drive to put Mark McLaughlin in this field goal attempt.
So recovery by the Stampeders today, beating the Taylor Field last week. They get the return match.